I think uh, my name is Praveen and I'm a data analyst, data scientist, and I've been working remotely for almost uh, three, three years, three, four years. And I've been in this fire, the fire whole financial independence and the saving and investing thing I heard, I think two, three years back from uh, one of my mentors, Pardeep Goel, who's already retired and he, he's a famous blogger and he's really famous for buying a farm in Chandigarh and he's retired and he bought a nice farm and he does farming full time. So he's actually achieved his fire goal. Uh, I think he and a few people in the industry was where I got the first time inspiration about the whole fire industry. And uh, since then I've been, you know, been very curious about how I can, you know, not do the, the normal traditional nine to five and do a different approach. So I've been regularly saving, investing and, and learning more about the fire community. So yeah, that's, uh, I'd be happy to share all learnings uh, that, I've, that I've gotten in the last three, four years. From the community and from everyone else. Nice. Chitrak, yeah. You can go. Uh, yes. Hi. My name is Chitrak. I uh, I live in Amsterdam. I work as a senior product manager for Booking.com. And before that, I was working in Flipkart, and then I had my own startup before that. Uh, I've been in the fire journey. I think pretty early. Uh, like I found out about fire right in college and I like as soon as I got started working on it I was like I started preparing for that it's a long journey I think I've been uh, yeah I think I've been actively saving for fire since I think 2015 and uh, yeah recently I kind of hit my milestone one so I'm very far from actually firing and like retiring and I think financial independence is one part of it and retiring is a complete different ball game uh, so I think now I've kind of started to think about, okay, what does retirement mean? And I feel that, okay, in due time, I'll hit my financial independence goal, but what will I do after that? So I think I have had some ups and downs and learnings with that. Uh, I've been also very interested in the whole remote uh, journey. Like I'm, I'm not working remotely as so like I am right now because of Corona and looks like booking might go full remote. But uh, yeah, I invest a lot of startups. I in, uh, like I advise a lot of startups. I do consulting, etc. So I, I it's all that works remote is remote. Uh, so yeah, I've had that exposure. So I'm here to basically share my learnings and also kind of uh, like to maybe give more of a balance of like okay, you like it's fire is not the end goal of life. You have to do fire, but you also have to do other things in life. You have to focus on your career and stuff. So how do you balance that? And how do you make it more sustainable? So I think I'll, um, that, that's, as of now, that's my outlook. I'll share, share more on that. Cool. That's, that's a, you know, great intro. So I'm, I'm quite excited to, you know, know more about this. So just yeah. to maybe, you know, like set up this session, like uh, what I was thinking of like this is what i was thinking of when you when you think of you know the retirement retirement age you probably mm -hmm. think that you know somebody in their late 50s or 60s and mm -hmm. th there's a reason for that right like yeah. it's generally the norm so while what we are trying to you know discuss in this uh, particular session is that maybe you know retirement isn't an age it, it is yeah. more like a financial number yeah. So I think uh, that's that's pretty much you know like the the uh, the objective of today's session, and I think we have like twelve people, so we can you know get started with the questions itself. One yeah. thing just just to you know let people know is that Chitrak has another meeting at six, so that's why we are trying to you know like have a hard stop at five minutes before six. So that's why we're trying to you know uh, stick. To, to, to our trying to keep it as sharp as possible. So, yeah, so just, you know, like a welcome to everybody who, who is just, you know, joined in and spending their Saturday evening with us. So thanks, thanks for joining us. So starting off with, you know, uh, the, the questions, like I have some questions and obviously we, we can, you know, take some questions from the audience uh, at the end of the session, but I, I have come up with a few questions which I feel, you know, could help us uh, know more about this movement. So to start off with, like what, what is, you know, like the FIRE movement? Like we know that, you know, it's an acronym for financial independence retirely, but how would you explain it to a layman? I mean, uh, Chitra, do you want to start off? Yeah. 
Sure. So uh, basically, fire in very simple term means that uh, okay, you have enough money so that you don't have to do a job anymore, and you can do whatever you want. So if it like. Uh, I think it comes from the fact that most people are living lives that they don't want to live and they do it because they have to have a job to make money so that they can uh, support their family and uh, uh, support their children or like a certain lifestyle. So I think FIRE movement is mostly about, okay, what if you don't have to do that? Like what if you save up enough money or you have enough investments so that you don't have to do a job anymore and you can do anything you like. You can travel the world if you want. You can be a scuba diving instructor. You can be a school teacher. And basically, you can do something that you don't want to do. Like, like money is not the motivation. You can do whatever you want. And it's like in, independent of money. So I think that's what FIRE means uh, in like its true sense. But uh, I think it's all, I also feel that it's a very personal thing. Everybody has a different understanding and connotation of FIRE and how they want to approach it and how what it means for them. Like personally for me, I don't think I want to retire per se. I, like, I, I would assume that all of us are like educated, smart, driven people. So we all, always want to do something new and contribute to something. Personally for me, it's more about independence. Like I don't want to be in a state where oh I have to work to do X Y Z. So if I even if I'm like even if I'm very well educated, very well trained, even if I have to do something which I don't want to do, then that's I feel that that's like restriction on me. So for to me, fire is basically some kind of an independence. Like okay, if I don't want to work for the next six months or one year, I can choose to sit back at home and like it's it's okay and like nothing. I, I'll be completely fine. So getting to that state in my head is fire. But uh, yeah, I think that's the summary of it. Okay, cool. Praveen, anything that you'd like to add to that? I mean, how would you, you know, explain it to, let's say, your parents, what you're trying to achieve, or maybe you know, if that if that metaphor helps. Uh, you're in mute, I think. Uh, okay, just let me. Kavin? Yes, still on mute. Oh, sorry, I was not able to unmute before it was some admin message. Yeah, so fire for me is also about freedom and independence more than, than an age. Just one caveat to what Chitrak said is that uh, uh, many people in the fire community, they try to do it only in their 30s or 40s as opposed to the usual 50s to 60s. Uh, and that's why this whole movement is kind of different because the, the, there's a... Uh, uh, there's a set of uh, uh, community and people who are trying to do it much, much earlier than the established age. So that's that's one more point of that community. And uh, for me, it's, so I've been thinking about quite a lot over the last few years, and I do not want to retire and sit on a beach and have pina coladas. That is not my end goal. My end goal would be to, exactly like, uh, like Chitrak said, to do and work on very interesting projects that I want to do and outsource everything that is completely boring and things that I do not enjoy. So that, that that's my main goal. And I've, I think I do 50, 60% of that right now. I work on projects 50, 60% of the time uh, where I really, really want to do it. And the remaining times are things that I just cannot avoid, but it has to be done by me for, for various goals. So the end goal would be to have enough X amount of money uh, or X amount of uh, passive income or, or whatever is the criteria or the metric. And that I'm not actively doing things that I do not want to do. And only focusing on on things I really am passionate about, really like, really enjoy, and and yeah, complete freedom. And then there comes two three aspects of freedom. Like uh, one is a location. I this I have achieved already. Uh, I want to be. I want to work from Amsterdam or Ahmedabad, uh, and it should a price should not be a problem. Uh, the visas or anything should not be a problem. I should be able to do that. So that I have achieved because I work for clients uh, in the US and different places. And it's completely there. And then the second comes, second two aspects are intertwined, which is time and money freedom. This is, it's, it's the time is always more important than money uh, because you can always get your money back. Uh, so time freedom is absolutely important. And for that, uh, I think the fire community has done a little, uh, they focus much, much more on frugality and saving than on understanding how you can actually gain this time freedom or, or the passive income aspects. So that is one thing that I do not like about FIRE community, but which I have really focused on uh, from other mentors of mine. 
so yeah that's that's my quick take on you know uh, how far i'm how i am approaching fire so okay yeah i think uh, that's like an interesting point that you brought up we'll we'll dive into you know the the, the aspect of frugality in in you know a later uh, you know part of the session uh, i think uh, the next question that you know like i was thinking of was what what would be you know like your take on like let's let's think about the maths behind you know fire like this is essentially like when we are dealing with finance like there is you know hard numbers right so are there any particular rules that you know uh, are basically you know like the, those are the you know defining rules for fire is that something which which you have seen yeah so i think there's a few few things uh, there there's multiple ways to approach this uh, but a couple top ones that brings uh, uh that that is important is a uh, lot of people what they do is they try to save up or I, I, first of all since this is a remote indian and specifically indian folks i would completely delete the word save from your vocabulary because as indians we have this this whole saving thing a little blown up too much i would replace that with invest that's what i like to do because uh saving we've been saving for a very very long time our and our inflation is at 7 8% which no one takes into account so i would just bring a big caveat on that the rules of fire include uh, one is looking at net worth and the other is looking at cash flow so net worth perspective is that you have 25 to 30 times of your annual expenses saved up when you have this number saved up which is 25 to 30 times or some people like to even blow it up to 40 50 uh times your annual expenses saved up then you can technically retire and you are free to not do any job based on the 4% rule uh, where you're just removing 4% from your net worth corpus every year and that is sufficient for you to to uh live uh, as well as you were living before uh when you were getting paid a salary or when you everything was going fine and you're not retired that is the net worth rule and then the other rule is is the cash flow rule uh where you set a number an x number let's call it uh, $10000 you save this uh, x number and you want that money coming in every month irrespective of whether you are retiring whether you are working or or even not working so it could be a combination of active income passive passive income and certain aspects this is sometimes not heavily discussed in the fire community but uh, this is a very very key aspect that you should focus on so i try to do a mix of these two to achieving fire where i will also work on building my net worth to that 25 30x and i also work on my cash flow such that my cash flow does not stop when i stop working it should continue to go on uh, with of course minimal effort there is no hidden passive income where where no one has where people have to do no work at all that's just they're selling you some scam over there uh, there are some things where of course you can automate and work like maybe one or two hours a week and then have things But yeah, these two are you know some top rules uh, from what I hear in the fire community. Yeah, I think from my end, uh, like to add a couple of points to it. So I think what Praveen mentioned is like the raw uh, math behind things that okay, you need to have this much money saved in, and you need to have this much inflow to have a lifestyle, and like how do you balance it with active or passive? But I think for someone uh, starting off with the fire journey. Uh, I think like I would like to give some kind of tips which help you with that, especially more on the like a personal emotional side and less with the math. I think the first thing is you have to stick with it. Uh, like when basically when you compute that 30x, 40x, 50x number that uh, Praveen just mentioned, it will come up to be so high that you will be like, "Fuck, this is not happening." Like I don't think I'll be able to do it. I don't know how these guys do it. So, so it's it's much like you have to stick with it. Like it will happen. Don't worry. You like even if you're saving 10,000 rupees per month. uh and like investing not saving investing your 10000 rupees per month yeah i'm not sure i can hear you no i can okay uh i think yeah go on yeah. i think i can hear okay. you huh? okay cool so uh yeah so you have to get started like at least in my personal experience like the first goal i set it took me like 3 years to get that and then i i was able to double like achieve the same amount in the next 6 months so you have to stick with it 
and that's, I think that's first thing I would say. Just get started and you will keep learning, you will make mistakes and you will move forward. I think the next thing I would say is what I think Praveen also uh, hinted at is increase your inflow. Like in my personal experience, increasing your inflow is much stronger than optimizing your returns. Like what most people do is that, oh, I have like five lakhs invested. Let me invest in Bitcoin. I will get 16% return, 18% return. This 1-2% will not make any difference. Focus on increasing your take home. Like if you are work, having a job, maybe getting a promotion, working or with like international clients. Like for the, like if you work, like you just because of currency arbitrage, you get paid more. Maybe doing a side gig, maybe building a passive income on the side. These will have... 10x more impact than optimizing returns. So don't go reading blogs around, okay, should I invest in large cap, small cap, should I do FT? All that is not that as important as you think. Uh, I think the another thing is compounding. Most people don't understand the power of compounding. So start investing today. And it's just not also like in money terms, you also can compound your skills. So like, for example, all of us are here in this remote Indian community. We have identified this new niche or this trend that is changing. We are already the first time, first movers. Maybe in the next three, five years, because we are the first guys to ex explore this opportunity, we will get a substantial return out of it. So I would say focus on finding these niche, these skill sets, go very deep into it. And then something like this will give you like a 10x or 100x return, which will completely make everything else you've done in life irrelevant. But yeah, finding that thing is the most important thing. And uh, yeah, I think next thing would be basically to build leverage. Like you cannot be, like you cannot retire or have a substantial financial inflow just by selling your time. Like if you keep doing a job, uh, I don't think that will make you very rich. So I think you have to kind of find things that work independent of your time. Like for example, if you buy a house, that house grows without you doing anything, you get richer. If you have a, maybe like some equity in a startup or you have your own side business that grows, like some SEO marketing thing, some tool that you made which keeps growing. So I think those are the things that like keep growing every month without much of your input that will help you fire instead of just uh, like trying to do these small hacks. So yeah, so I think like these three or four rules, if you guys stick with that, I think that will really get you started. Yep, absolutely. I think the earnings point is, is, is I will just press more on that, the earnings point, because uh, I, I see a lot of people like, they, they keep asking me this, which mutual fund, which uh, which cryptocurrency or, or which, uh, what do you call, which debt fund should I put instead of my bank account? I mean, yeah, it is true that the worst place to keep your money is your bank account because of the lower rates. That is true. Please do use mutual funds, use stocks and use all that. But after the basics are done, just completely let it be and focus on your earnings and your skill sets because uh, if you can 10x and I would like to elaborate one more thing in this, like a lot of people try to do 10, 20%, 30% hikes in India of, of the overall yearly package. So a 10% hike is actually a 3% hike. If you counter in inflation, if let's take inflation to be 7%, a 10% hike is not a 10% hike. It's 3%, a 20% hike is is 13%, uh, a 30% hike is 23%. So always remember that number, you're not getting a 10% hike. So a quick hack to do that is instead of 10% hikes, always try to think how you can 10x your earnings. Let's say your earning is $1,000. How can I make that $10,000? Now, of course, that's, that's not simple, but that will at least, once you start thinking, you will at least have 10 ideas to, to approach that problem. Uh, Grant Cardone and his famous 10x rule, it has a beautiful way of, you know, uh, doing that. Of course, he's a little overboard entrepreneur where he's going and, and killing businesses and, and growing stuff like, like anything. But that's a beautiful rule that you can use in your earnings. Like, how can I 10x my actual salary? One great way that I tried to find in 2016 was, let me find out how much I actually make in one hour. Or let me find out how much I make in one day, in one week. Not my yearly package. My yearly package is always XYZ, lakh per hour, lakh per annum, right? But I want to find out what I'm doing today, how, what, what I'm earning today and what I'm earning next week. So that's that's a beautiful metric to, to use. 
and uh, since I, now i since in 2016 i left my job when i started freelancing so it's always i know exactly how many x rupees i'm earning or x dollars i'm earning per hour or per week so that's that's a beautiful metric to have and now i know i can how i can 10x my income or how i can even approach that problem of course it's a tough problem to solve you have to upgrade your skills you have to do right marketing you have to find the right clients but that's a beautiful question to ask yourself so yeah i would highly uh, just double down on that earnings less and more sorry guys i think i'm facing some issues with my internet today can you hear me yeah, yes yeah we can hear you uh i am not able to hear you but uh, i'll try restarting can you like i'm not able to hear you guys so i'll, I'll try you know rejoining it so in the meanwhile can you guys you know like uh, share your personal journey you know like just to yeah. okay okay i'll i'll probably sure. share some story about why i got into this uh, whole fire things i think like i've always heard about it i was doing all of this but i was not very serious uh, so i think it happened to me when i was in bangalore so i used to work for flipkart and uh, so i graduated from an iit i was i think one of the high performing students in iit i got one of the best jobs i had a good package i also used to love my job there was nothing wrong with my job i would do that job for free so uh, but then like one day i was like coming from that whole kadu beach and halli to sarjapur area and i started to rain and i got stuck for in traffic for two and a half hours and i was like what am i doing like i did everything right i make money i love my job there like every, everything is perfect from the outside but why am i like stuck in traffic like what's the point of a life like this like why why am i doing this to myself like why can't i just go back to home or like go somewhere else and uh, chill and then i think the, the answer that came to me is that no i need the money like if like if for me to have enough like a good lifestyle for my family and like throughout the life this is my career and to do this career i have to basically do a job and to do a job i have to work in the factory and then i have to do this traffic every day and i was like okay shit this this doesn't make sense at all and i think that is how i got started and that was like my trigger that shit okay i need to solve this thing and uh, so then basically what i did is i set a benchmark i knew that i won't be able to retire but i was like okay let me do this let me save a little bit let me save enough and then i quit my job so i quit my job in flipkart and i was always interested in side projects working with friends etc so then i basically quit my job and i traveled for 6 months so i went to russia for a month i went to thailand malaysia japan uh, indonesia singapore uh, like even within india i started backpacking and while working remotely so i think this is that's like that is how i also got into this whole remote uh, uh, movement and uh, and so, so i think that like like when you do that you start to realize okay what do you like what do you not like what kind of lifestyle do you want to do and uh, so i think that that experience really helped me understand okay what is important to me like is that career important to me is that social branding that okay this guy is a vp in some big tech company is that important to you or not and uh, so i so like I, that is when i decided that okay no that's not something that's not the path i want to chase so i'll always be unhappy like if even if i become a vp in flipkart or like even the ceo of flipkart i'll get stuck in the same traffic like funnily one day i got stuck with billy bunson right next to me and we were like next to each other for two hours and i was like yeah, the ceo when get traffic mein tu bhi phasa hi hai so like what's the point of being the ceo of flipkart so So yeah, then that way, that day I then decided I moved to Amsterdam for a much better life to make a lot more money because of the currency arbitrage. And uh, so yeah, so I think you it's like you really need to also have very clear priorities as to what you want to achieve, what is important to you, what kind of life you want to live to basically design your fire journey. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, cool, Praveen. I love the, love the CEO story. <laughs> How you got stuck with this? So I think I think mine is similar. I I'm also in Bangalore right now, and uh, I've been here for since 2013. I got a job in uh, Mu Sigma right out of college um, after 10 field interviews. <laughs> so so, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, so I worked for Mu Sigma for three years, and I realized that so I've been a little background. 
background story is that I've been wanting to run my own business or start my own company in college too. I read this book in college called uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad in 2010. Uh, uh, There's a beautiful, a very nice book, which is just sold like more than 200 million copies and, and it's still relevant. Book and how I really and I did this small business called network marketing in, in 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 college itself, where I had to bring people to events and sell them on some very very lame product, uh, and and that really set the core for some very very basic uh, business mind in my head. And when I got into data analytics and I used to study businesses and I used to work for you know good Fortune 500 clients with uh, with the job itself, and I saw how how these clients are paying in, in dollars and, and how my company is paying me in peanuts. And, and, and I actually got to see that, that whole cash flow and, and, and a lot of things. Uh, I kind of realized that, that I can actually work for them directly. I mean, I'm doing good work after a couple of years, I realized I don't really need this, this middleman because there's a lot of IT companies just do that. And, and a, lot, a lot of data science analytics companies in India do that. They just get American plans or uh, European clients and they hire a bunch of people who are uh, who are hungry for work and then they give it to them. So I just kind of, I thought I can just bypass the whole thing and actually get the clients myself. And uh, from then uh, I, I approached the freelancing and, and running my own business. And that's how I, I got on Upwork myself and uh, started uh, increasing my earnings slowly. And then uh, that's when I, I realized that there, about the FIRE community and I understood how there are people, uh, the, uh, and also the digital nomad community. I, I had been reading about them for a very long time, and they were just working from Bali or Thailand, and these are Americans and Europeans who've just left their countries completely, and they don't even go back. Like I know probably 100 Americans or, or Europeans who literally live in Southeast Asia, just for the currency arbitrage and for a better lifestyle than their own first world countries. So I, I actually wanted to do that too, and uh, the whole aspect surrounded was not to just go and travel, but to have complete independence on if I want to go be with family, family person who's ill and who's not well, I can go do that. Because I had a few friends who had that situation and they could not do that, even though they were in a, in a very, very high level job or, or were extremely busy and all that. So I wanted that location independence and time independence. And the only way to do that was to, was to do something of my own where I demand the hours and the projects. Like if I want to work at midnight, I am able to work on midnight and not at 12 p.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning, right? So, so that's how I've kind of changed my lifestyle where I don't have to get up at eight o'clock and dress up and go to an office where I don't and with the Bangalore traffic, which is significantly reduced since March. Yeah, of course. But yeah, so that's that's my. Uh, I think that's a very important point you raised. I think it's very like even before you like okay, not before, but you everyone I think needs to understand what kind of lifestyle do they want to go after. And I think that will really help you understand what kind of fire goals uh, you want to go after. Because, uh, like for example, if you like a certain kind of life, you like a certain like you like going to work, you want to work in the, like a Google or Facebook or like even like say a Flipkart or Swiggy in India, then maybe you don't need to retire. Like basically, you don't have to save that money because you will always do that job and that will always pay you the right amount of money. Uh, I think finding what you want to do, like my thumb, thumb rule for that is that what is it that you will do for free? Let's say like uh, if there's like you have infinite money, you won a lottery or your dad gave you $100 million, what did you do then? And then, then basically go do that. And now if that thing pays you enough money, then maybe you don't need to fire, like then it's all good. And you can just live your life and you will have that cash flow coming in. But uh, a lot of times, at least I've met so many people that they are not happy with their current life or their current job. And then they're like, oh, I have to, because I need a salary. So they try to achieve this fire goal. And this is just an excuse. Like basically they don't really want to put the effort into finding what they want to do because 95% of the time, what you really want to do, you can do it even today. Like there's no, nothing stopping you. Like for example, Praveen did not enjoy that thing. He quit his job, he's working freelancing remotely and he's pretty happy with his life. But most people, because they don't want to take that step, they make this go excuse that, oh, after I hit 30X or 50X of my number, then I will do that. They spend 15 years doing that. And then after that, they're like, oh shit, I don't enjoy this thing. And then like, so you've wasted your last 15 years chasing a boat. So I would say that it's a balance. Try finding what you want to do. And uh, maybe hit a number. Let's say, let's say your 30x number is five crores. 
let's say hit 50 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 30 lakhs, and let hit 30 lakhs, take a break for six months and do what you thought you will do. Like if you said, I will be a school teacher or I will, let's say, go work in a farm like Praveen's friend, then do that. Do that for two months and see if you actually enjoy that. And there's a very good chance that you will not enjoy it. And uh, yeah, after, and like once you know, okay, this is what I want to do, this is the kind of lifestyle you want then hitting your fire goal becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for mentioning that. I think, you know, every framework, I would say, you know, kind of comes with a caveat. And I think we, we are trying to reiterate that point again and again, that it's, it's not important that, you know, you reach that number. It's also important, uh, you know, what's the psychology or what's the, you know, why behind, you know, reaching mm-hmm. that number. Otherwise, it's just like an, another hollow goal that, you know, you're trying to chase after. Yes. So, yeah. So, I think you guys, you know, have been talking, like, you know, you have been uh, mentioning that, you know, raising your income is, is very important. You know, that's something which uh, one should really focus on. Yes. But then, you know, like a lot of talk is there also about frugality, right? Mm. And maybe, you know, like frugality doesn't mean that you have to deprive yourself. But as an example, you know, let's say if you move to uh, from, you know, uh, an expensive city like Bangalore to mm-hmm. your hometown mm-hmm. and, you know, start working out of there. Do you think that, you know, get, gives you some leverage or would you still, you know, like, like to try to focus on more on, you know, income streams, like increasing your income streams or, you know, uh, increasing your uh, salary as such? So I think my take on that is very simple. So this whole fire thing is so that once you have have enough money, you can live a happy life. So like if you're chasing happiness, you can't have like you can't punish yourself to get to happiness. So I don't I completely don't believe in delayed gratification. Like life is short, you don't know what will happen tomorrow. You have to enjoy life. So I don't believe in depriving yourself or doing things that you don't like just so that you can hit that number. Absolutely not. Uh, my I think how I look at it is that it's more about being aware. So, of course, like you don't have to go crazy. Oh, I got like one lakh into my account, my salary. Okay, let me like don't live paycheck to paycheck. Try to save, invest your money, try to be more aware and do only things that you enjoy. Like, if for example, you like playing FIFA, go buy buy that PlayStation. But if you go and don't like drinking every Friday night on like in a club, then just don't go with your friends and spend 10,000 rupees having beer in an expensive club in Bangalore. So I think it's, it's all more about being aware and uh, be like, I, would, I wouldn't say deprive yourself, just be aware and live a lifestyle that you want to live and not that, okay, I have this money, I'm going to spend it. And I think if you hit that balance, then it should be all okay. Okay. Praveen, any Yep. So yeah, you right, thoughts. Yeah. You rightly said that 50 to. Uh, so I think a lot of fire community have this this rule, the unsaid rule that 50 to 75 percent of their earnings they want to save uh, and invest basically. So I think, uh, and a lot of people do deprive themselves of of some things they want for that. So that is something I absolutely hate. Like as rightly as Chitrak said, I, I love spending money. I actually have a list called uh, Money Dials. So this is something I learned from Ramit, Ramit Sethi, uh, which we'll just uh, give in the book recommendations. Uh, think about what you love spending money on. Like, I'm not talking, uh, like, what brings a smile to your face? Like, for me, travel is on the top. Uh, eating in extremely beautiful luxury restaurants is on the top uh, of that list. You can pick your own and, and absolutely blow your money in that. Like, like spend very well in that. So, I, uh, and one quick relation to that is again, comes back to earning more money. If you earn more money, you can easily sp- save that 50% of, of, of your paycheck, right? So that is a pure number one rule that is coming in. And uh, yeah, I think the rest was covered then. So, like I think the early on when I got started into this journey, uh, like I don't do it anymore, but what really helped me was uh, like you have this tendency that even you let's say you hit set, set a goal that okay I have to save five crores before I turn like 40 or 50 to retire. That looks like a big number and you try to be very frugal, you try to save money. What I did was I set a budget that okay I'm going to save this, much. this is my rent, this is my thing and this is my spending money. And I used to make sure that I spend that money every month. That okay I have this 10,000 now I, like I've saved this I'm going to go crazy. And then I think rewarding yourself for that discipline kind of also helped 
set me a healthy habit that okay if i put aside 10 to 15000 rupees per month to spend on myself to have fun and i did that every time i used to feel good that's okay i am also having fun i am also saving money uh, i am doing everything i have i have planned to do and that i think helps you balance it very well otherwise what if you deprive yourself for too long you'll do it for 6 months and then you'll be like yeah fuck it doesn't matter like let's say if you invest for 6 months market goes down your net worth is like 30 40% down you're like okay this is not happening and then you'll be like okay uh, you'll start spending your money anyway and yeah so you won't get anywhere so you have to be more sustain, more uh, like a, something that you can do for years yes and just to add one more thing i was at a beautiful event in in february in mumbai called uh, millionaire mind intensive and they they taught a very beautiful system uh, that i really like i'll, I'll share the link on, on on chat it's called the jar system so they have something called uh, a necessities jar where you have your necessity spending then you have a play jar where you have money spending just for play like whatever you enjoy and then long term savings and all that and there's like proper allocation like 10% goes into this 10% and you should do that even if you have 100 dollars like if you have 10000 rupees like i 1000 i will completely enjoy that 1000 rupees spending that 1000 and into what exactly and then 1000 will go into this x amount and so that's that's just very beautiful system that you can start doing like right now that's like a baby step only then when you have 10 lakhs 20 lakhs you will be investing properly otherwise suddenly if you get that big sum of money you would kind of it's like the lottery winner thing 95% of lottery winners go bankrupt in i think two years one or two years because they're just not used to the discipline of having that money that's why they go bankrupt that's why it's extremely important to have that system at 100 rupees 1000 rupees at 1 lakh only then you will have those discipline and system at bigger sums cool that's 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 helpful guys i think uh, so so chitra i think you mentioned about stocks right and i think yeah. that leads us to you know like the next question which is like i came across this article on mint recently that mm-hmm. because of the covid crisis there suddenly you know like there's a big fall on 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 your equity yeah. uh, portfolio right so is there something like you know like a ratio that you need to maintain like i i i was you know like reading that article and it felt a little confusing to me like uh, the debt yeah. to equity ratio should be you know this much percentage like could you just you know uh, share your thoughts on that okay. like i i, I kind of think of it as like a long term thing like you know in yeah. the long term you know market is going to kind of you know recover so okay is it I'll like you know a, yeah so i'll answer it from two perspectives i think this is question more around financial planning and less around fire and uh, so like if i think of it from a fire perspective uh, let's say you had this goal at 40 that okay i will have this so much money at 40 and then because of covid shit went down man like i think covid is like a life changing event for all of us companies are going down governments are going down so your fire journey going down is like nothing in that perspective so yeah like shit happens you you things will go bad like you can't do much about it but uh, the good thing is that if you were planning for 40 now you will probably recover by 45 like you will have to adjust a few things because of your discipline and because of following that fire journey you are much better prepared if you were if you would not have done that then like now you are just like oh shit i have to work for five more years in the other scenario if you would not have been more prepared you would be like oh shit i don't have money to pay my kids school fees if i get laid off and all my investments are gone down so i think that's where i would look at it from a, a financial from a fire perspective and uh, yeah i'm not an expert but quickly to answer from a f- uh, financial planning perspective the debt to equity ratio is i think a very personal thing how much risk you take and i have learned this in the very hard way the first thing that comes to especially young earners is that oh i have 30 40 years to go let me just put this money what if what if it goes down i don't care like i'll sit on it for 20 years and it will eventually come back we all look at averages doesn't work that way man like when you see okay shit i invested 3 lakhs and now it is 1 lakh because uh, you it's it's very very hard to see that movement going up and down and like on the other hand you see that oh you invested 3 lakhs after 5 years it is only 4 lakhs yeah, like it's only 3.2 so oh i like it would if i would have put it in ft that would have been a better option so these questions come to everyone's head so i i actually am i don't change, think of uh, returns don't think of returns so oh, i will get 12% 14% 6% 16% think of a corpus okay i want to say 50 lakhs or 30 lakhs 
keep putting money keep the right asset allocation to handle your volatility and then don't look at returns just keep putting your money in when you get 50 lakh bring it out doesn't matter that oh now if it is growing at 20% let me keep stick with it put money hit your goal bring it out because like if you start mm. chasing the market chasing the return timing the market like that's not your job like you are a developer or a designer or a product guy then like leave it to the warren buffets of the world to do that that's not what you're good at so like don't don't right. chase so just to get you know this right so once you get to like let's say your corpus like 50 lakhs is your corpus so mm-hmm. then you should you just put it in an index fund which is much more safer and you know it will it will give you that predictable you know interest is that you know like the the end game of sorts so i haven't like so if you're talking about your whole fire corpus and like where to put that uh i wouldn't comment on that because if you're someone who has hit that fire corpus then you probably know enough that you don't need my advice <laughs> but uh and if and like if you're looking for uh, more uh short term goals let's say you wanted to buy a bike and you put that money you hit that market so like bike is something that you can live without so then maybe you can put it in an index fund take that volatility but let's say if you have to pay, pay your school, like a uh, college fees or you want to do an mba and you have put that money aside you have to pay it in 6 months put it in debt fund put it in fd so why take a risk like the why chase that extra half a lakh because yeah it doesn't really matter like put it put it in six hmm. praveen any room to you know like for panicking during you know the current scenario like do you, do you see any any you know reason to panic so i think Yeah, so as he rightly said, this is going into financial planning, and this will take hours to actually cover it. But but yeah, just okay. give a crux crux is that yeah, you should just set something that, and you should leave this whole financial planning to experts, and you should just follow. So for me, I'll, I'll tell you what I did uh, last time last year. I had a decent amount of uh, money saved up, and it was lying around in bank accounts or or in just debt funds, which is low interest. So I hired a financial planner and completely outsourced my whole thing. So if you have a decent enough corpus. you should hire experts and then get it done because if you want to research your own self it's really playing with fire uh, like actual fire uh, and uh, it, it's it, it's and you the whole manually managing it is 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 a whole uh, a different ball game altogether so yeah i would not mm-hmm. have any more comments on that because that's yeah, a yeah. whole different topic big one yeah that's that's perfectly you know okay i think we we genuinely need to you know kind of uh, think about yeah, like, it from like you know what what is our expertise right our expertise yeah. is maybe like programming or you know like our expertise is more in in you know building businesses so yeah. i think that's that uh, is, hinting back yeah. to what pravin said earlier is like you will never hit the next like even if you go after chasing the best mutual fund or stocks you will not the next your inflow with that but being a programmer or a designer or a startup guy you can actually mm. connect with your own skills so the focus is always connecting your inflow like in two years you have to earn 10 times what you're earning right now and how, what will you do like you will not be able to hit that by timing the market so don't put your energy there instead put your energy mm. where you actually have that edge to get that tenx okay cool so i think we just you know are finishing up on our uh, you know time we time limit so i just want to you know like uh, maybe end this call and then we'll you know like have some audience questions as well is uh, this question like what are the first steps that somebody can take towards you know this this particular any you know uh, particular things that we can start doing mm. get get you know uh, started on this journey on this fire journey oh, ravin you want to take that yeah so i think i, I just shared the jar system i i love that for for basic beginners that is just perfect it's not exactly a fire thing but if you just follow that discipline of you know it's it's given exact buckets and jars in a very simple system that any layman can understand i shared a link on that so it has basically 55% uh necessities then 10% of your income should go to uh, play then 10% should go to education and uh, and 10% should go to long term savings of course you can play with these percentages as you want but yeah, if you follow a certain rule and system and automate your stuff it's it's very easy to follow for any beginner and uh, yeah 
that's that's all I would have to say for beginners. Yeah. From I my end, say uh, like, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. go ahead. No, I was just uh, going to say that you know, like the 10x thing was you know like the main uh, you know like leverage like that's the biggest uh, you know step you can take. But other than you know like let's say increasing your income you know to that level, are there any other steps that you would you know uh, recommend? So I think it happens organically for you. Like you basically once you start thinking about this and you start reading and you start doing your math and look at that Excel sheet and sheet and go shit, this is not happening. Automatically ideas will come to you and you will start meeting people and talking to people. Uh, I think what helped me was that coming up with a number is possible and you will get it like there's no point getting into that math. And uh, so what I did was that I said, okay, I, I decided on a number. And which was realistic enough, but still quite ambitious. And they're like, okay, I have to hit that number in the next three or five years. That will be this is my net worth. And uh, so I am a very firm believer. Like I even do this in my startup and products, etc. That if there is a number on the board, it will always go up. So basically, if you have a metric, you will chase it down eventually. So it's basically mm -hmm. all about looking at that metric and tracking that metric. So what I would say is put a number on the board and start chasing it. Uh, you will initially start making improvements. You will make some investments. You will make mistakes. Don't worry about mistakes. Like everyone on this planet has made mistakes regarding financial planning. And then this only, you can, that's the only way to learn. So don't be scared of that. And uh, start investing, start making money. And then you're like, okay, I'm, I need to... Uh, get more money, like, uh, and then that's when you are basically your brain will start working, and then you will think of read about what some other friend did, what some other guy did on the internet, and then you will come up with your own idea what works for you. And uh, yeah, and I think I would my another advice would be that don't pick a very high number, pick a small enough number, let's say something that gives you a one year or two year runway. That okay, I can not work for two years. And I'll be fine. Mm. Like apart from my basic emergencies and like, like I have this extra money that even like, like even that's like, that's like my play money saved up for the next two years. One year is also fine. Take that and then take a break for six months. Like if you want to retire early, try retiring, like do retire early, like retire for six yeah. months. See what it does to you. It's not easy. Like I've done that and uh, like the what you enjoy on looking at photos on Instagram or reading about in blogs, 90% of the time it doesn't work for you. And retire right. early, see what works for you, and only then I think that will give, give you so much learnings to around lifestyle and the kind of work you want to do. That I think that learning is infinitely more helpful than actual retiring. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, like mini retirements is something which is, you know, talked about in many circles, like, you know, people go on these mini retirements where they take a year off or take a two year off and yes. that helps them to, you know, be much more self-aware, like what, what are the things that they genuinely like is, is you know, like uh, the amount of free time they suddenly have, you know, like is, is that causing like a loss of identity? Things like that. I think those yeah. are uh, very deep questions, which obviously, you know, like uh, nobody can answer it. It's, it's something yes. which, you know, has to come from a very personal uh, process. Yeah. Like, I think so, personally for me, I actually feel that I have achieved 60% of what I would want to do after I fire. So just because it was clearer to me what I want to do, I hmm. I already have that lifestyle. Like, yeah, like I travel a lot, I uh, do side gigs, I spend time with friends. So all those things that I really want to do after retiring, I realized that 60-80% of them I can do even with a job, even with uh, uh, having responsibilities, even without having that fire money in my account. And it's still possible. And you can, I think, live a much happier life even without retiring. Yeah. Cool. So I think uh, we will now, you know, stop to, you know, have some questions from the audience. So guys, if, if you have any question, just, uh, you know, raise your hand and I'll, you know, uh, try to unmute you if, if I can. So, uh, Chitra, Praveen, if you yeah. guys have any recommendations, maybe, you know, like you can just post it on the, on the Slack channel. 
for yeah. people to you know just continue on this research i think you shouldn't go overboard with you know reading books and blogs i think it's it's more about journaling or thing about you know so i think uh, that's something which which we would like to like, encourage in the community rather than you know just reading about things so any any questions guys uh, okay we have like a reddit subreddit for pyre yeah. nice yep very famous uh, I've seen a lot of conversations about. It. I'll share a couple book recommendations that are that really help you, and which are actionable. Yeah, for for our work week has always you know like come up in these discussions. I think that's something which a lot of people. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, if people are feeling shy to ask any questions. I think uh, we can you know always take them offline as well. Like feel free to you know post them on the finance channel. I think uh, there were a couple of questions on the chat. I think. Yeah, yeah. Let me just scroll upwards. I think I might have logged off. So some of the questions. This one by Shivam, which is retire early is generally thirty to forty x, which hmm. multiplier is generally good for uh, financial independence. So uh, yeah, I think it's a very hard question. and i don't think there is a multiplier that i can give you i think it's a very personal thing uh as to like what you are comfortable with so like if you say financial independence for like what do you want to do after financial independence let's say you want to sit back at home spend time with parents and not do any job or any source of income so i think that is what i would call probably like financial independence if you want to do that for 2 3 years uh how much money would you be comfortable with uh sitting with that i think that's a very personal thing uh thing what i did was i put up a benchmark of the two three years of living expenses so once i hit that three years of living expenses that's when i took my first mini break of uh, traveling and uh, then so now i have another goal which i have hit so i think now i'll also i'll be taking another probably mini retirement and I, I think of it more in milestones. Which uh, okay, let me hit this. After I hit this, I will reward, reward myself by doing X Y Z, which I also want to do, and and keep doing different things. So, like for example, if some of you love hiking, you're like, okay, I'm gonna go for two months and learn like hike the Himalayas. Then set a set a milestone for yourself. Hit that milestone. Reward yourself. Go live in the Himalayas for two months, and then come back and restart your journey. cool i think uh, we don't if you don't have any questions i just want to maybe summarize this and you know end this call so like what i realized was that you know like one of the big things that you kind of you guys both you know spoke very heavily emphasized very heavily was try to focus on you know like increasing your income rather than trying to be very frugal and depriving yourself of uh, you know like trying to save very very like focusing on the smaller uh, benefits that you can get like smaller margins that you can increase by you know mm-hmm. choosing the mutual fund things like that then the second part which i really you know like stuck in my head was having a number i think having a number on board kind of you know forces you to think in that direction as in like you know try to choose a number which might help you to let's say you know like have like a mini retirement like a sabbatical of sorts i think uh, that's what uh, both of you kind of you know try to uh, say that rather than thinking about it like more like a marathon like you know 15 year uh, journey i think uh, it's always good if you can break that up into smaller milestones anything else guys that you wanted to you know uh, bring up before we end this call i think this this has been like a great discussion and all you know this is just a start but i just wanted to summarize before we kind of finish anything else guys that work uh no i think that's uh, that's it from my end start reading about it that said like get started is basically what i'll say get started start mm-hmm. doing something start reading start saving start investing uh get started today and i think time is the biggest thing here like the longer you do this the stronger you will get like the it is like your effort 
doesn't matter as much as the time you spend in this journey. So the earlier you start, the easier it will be. So just get started, start doing things, and then I'm sure you'll yourself figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, it's less about, you know, retiring early and more about having the freedom to, you know, do what you want to do. As in, I think, yes. like, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously, like, you know, a privilege that we are in a profession which allows us to, you know, think about this. But I think we also need to, you know, take, expect a little bit more about from ourselves. I think, you know, that's, that's the whole idea behind, you know, having this discussion is can we, you know, participate in, let's say, things like which are, much more, you know, uh, social like causes or things like that. At least that's coming from a very personal, you know, uh, you know. So things like that, you know, I think that that is what fire allows me to do. So great guys. Uh, so I think uh, if you guys, you know, enjoyed this, you know, just let me know. I think it, it kind of gives me a little bit of encouragement as well to keep, keep going on this, this journey. And if you have any feedback, you can always, you know, uh, let me know in, in Slack. So thanks, thanks everyone for joining in. Thanks, Praveen. Thanks, Chitra, for, for your time and your inputs. I, I genuinely, you know, will keep coming back to you with, you know, like things that I have in my mind. And it will always be good to, you know, share notes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for hosting this. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me or... I mean, as well, if you have any questions, just post it on the Slack thread. And if there's anything we can, I can help with, feel free to let me know. Cool, guys. That's it then. Have a nice evening then. Bye-bye. See you guys. See you guys. Bye.